Welcome back to an all new episode of the Grand Valley State Sports Report on WGVU. I'm your host, Jake Levy. This week, we highlight the GVSU women's soccer team as they make it to the NCAA Final Four again this season. GVSU women's basketball split their first weekend of GLIAC basketball. GVSU men's basketball would also go one and one over the weekend. GVSU volleyball fell in the opening round of the playoffs, but we'll look back at a great year for the Laker team. Our feature this week highlights new standouts on the GVSU women's soccer team. Lock it in, Laker Nation, as the Grand Valley State Sports Report starts right now. GVSU women's soccer team is back in the NCAA Final Four as they found two wins this weekend. First, they took down Saginaw Valley on Friday afternoon, and then they would follow that up with a 1-0 win against Central Missouri on Sunday in the NCAA quarterfinals. The team heads to Colorado Springs this week to take on Lenore Ryan at 1 p.m. on Thursday. Joining us now to talk about his team is head coach Jim Conlon and coach first year at the helm of Grand Valley State. Back to the Final Four. Congratulations. How do you feel? I feel great. Thanks for the congratulations. Uh, just really excited for the women of the program. Uh, you know, everyone uh, across the country and world has been dealing with COVID for over a year. You know, we got that conference uh, tournament last spring and then the coaching change over the summer. So I'm just thrilled for these women to, you know, lock in and make sure that um, they accomplish to their potential. And so far we, we've done that, uh, but we're not done. Great to see the defense really step up this weekend as well. Saginaw Valley is a very good offensive team. They have Strong, who's got 14 goals this year. She's been phenomenal in her freshman year. You guys found a way to keep them basically without a real shot on goal throughout that entire match. What was working so well for your defense in the second time you faced Saginaw this year? Yeah, Saginaw is a really talented team, um, and I thought our defense, uh, starting with our back line, but really the whole team defense did a nice job of making the play predictable, pushing balls into zones that we were looking forward to, overloading defensively uh, to keep some talented goal scorers uh, farther away from the net and, and out of their comfort zone. So I, I was just really pleased with the entire team defense and, and the backline organization in particular. Yeah, the way that your midfield set up, because they're really good in the midfield as well. It seemed like you were pushing them to one side, and then Sess was there to kind of clean things up. And then, of course, Brooke and Abby have been playing really, really well in the center back as well. All three of them played all 180 minutes or whatever it is this week. And I know that's kind of typical for this time of year if you're holding mid and your two center backs to play that way. But to see those three playing as well as they are, that has to be a key reason for your success, right? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, this time of year you want to put uh, the right people on the field. By now we kind of understand who's going into certain spots. Um, and certain rotations, but uh, Abby and Brooke have done quite a bit on that back line. I know it looks like they're two center backs, but we asked them to do different stuff each game, and they've really responded. Um, and then Sess in the midfield is an extension of that back line, and we've asked her to push up the field to maybe set the wedge a little earlier than the cleanup um, as the holding, but she's been doing both really well, which has helped our team quite a bit. And then, you know, the pieces around them, you know, the outside backs, getting into support positions, the other central midfielders uh, squeezing the play to get those balls into positions where those three women that you mentioned are winning the ball. Yeah, I really like the depth that this team is starting to show, particularly at that outside back position. McKenna Schoolman and Sarah Smolinski coming off the bench have really done a nice job of bolstering what you can do with those outside backs and allow Mia and Alexa to pull, push a little higher and really not worry about exhausting them because you have so many pieces that can come in and kind of make up for that. Yeah, that back line has tremendous depth right now. We are very excited about uh, what what is happening on that back line and, and it has allowed us to open things up a little bit to play that depth and kind of stay on the front foot uh, defensively cover the backside but offensively push another number forward uh, so we're just excited to see that <coughs> continue to grow uh, this week as well as we go into Colorado Springs. Do you, you beat Saginaw Valley to win the region, which is always cool, but then you win a trophy, and it's kind of a weird thing. You win the trophy on Friday. You have to come back and play a really important match on Sunday right. against a very talented Central Missouri team. They're young, but Lewis has been there for 15 years. They're experienced in these types of games. You knew this was going to be a crazy one. You throw in the weather that you had now, and right. what a cluster that was <laughs> for a while. But to get that early goal seemed to be huge, and obviously you hold on for the one nothing win. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Central Missouri Grand Valley State is not a new combination and, right. and opponent. And, and I think you're looking at two quality sides that, you know, play good soccer. And, and like you said, 
we can't control when they hand out a trophy, but we do know that uh, we, we hope to get two games in a weekend. And so once we got that trophy, we were proud, we were excited, let's celebrate it. Um, but we had earned the opportunity to finish the weekend with the second game. And Central Missouri came out uh, the way we expected, um, you know, very tactically aware, pressed at certain moments. Um, but I was, I was pleased that we could get on that front foot, score that first one early. Thought we had chances to score a couple more. Uh, thought they had a couple chances to score a couple more. Uh, but pleased with the one nothing win. Then uh, let's go to the very end of the game because you start with the goal. The wind is at their back in the second half. The foul occurs just outside the 18 with time winding down. You have a freshman goalkeeper. I was at practice all week. You were working on setting walls and working on those set piece defensive. And sure enough, it comes true that the season basically comes down to a set piece defensive plan for Kendall to make the save, set the wall, put herself in good position. That has to feel so rewarding for you and so happy for that freshman to make a play. Like yeah, that. I'm happy the team was organized where they needed to be. Um, you know, we, we always try to talk about trust our preparation if we can and make sure we've got all situations prepared for, even though we don't know which ones we're going to use. Um, but that one worked out. And, and Kendall and our entire goalkeeping core have been fantastic in practice, pushing each other to be the best each other can be for each other. And we were able to, you know, put Kendall in that net into a situation where she felt comfortable and handled the save, and we got the win. So you go from a team that you're super familiar with in the postseason in Central Missouri to a team that Grand Valley has never faced before in any situation in Lenore Ryan this week in the NCAA semifinal. They've had three advances on PKs in this tournament already, so they are used to playing tight games. They've handled the pressure. What can we expect this week, and what's kind of your message to the team going to the semifinal? Yeah, we've obviously got a lot of work to do in preparation uh, <laughs> coming off of yesterday's result to get ready for. Uh, Thursday, but you know, anytime someone goes into three PKs and advances, you know they're ready for any facet of the game. I mean, whether it's an offensive game, a defensive game, they're ready to battle. So we expect a great match on Thursday, and we're obviously going to take the next three days to prepare and, and make sure we're at our best. Well, you also got to fly out to Colorado. I'm excited to join you out there, Coach. Congratulations on a fantastic year so far. Let's go to Colorado Springs and keep it rolling. All right, we'll try. Next up, Tom Cleary highlights some of the standouts on this year's women's soccer team as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues here on WGVU. It was an emotional bombshell that hit the soccer program in mid-June when Jeff Hostler left to become the head coach at Michigan State, where he'd eventually be joined by Grand Valley All-America forward Ava Cook. But shortly after new coach Jim Conlon arrived, it became clear Kennedy Bearden would be his choice to lead the Laker line, something she's done with distinction. In addition to being a double-figure goal scorer in 2021, Kennedy has become expert at stretching defenses and pressuring defenders in order to create opportunities for others. A winner from Kennedy Beard. She continues to be hungry, continues to ask a lot of questions. Uh, we've asked a lot of different things out of her this year, and she continues to raise her own personal bar uh, to do what it takes to be successful for her team and what we're asking of her. With the new players coming in and new coach coming in, you never know like what you're going to get, but I think that we've done a great job of like kind of all blending together and getting used to it, and I think it's been good for our team just to, you know, see some new things and new players, and they've been great, so I think it's been a great addition to our team. As Bearden adopted quickly to her new role as a target forward, Conlon has also gotten steady performances from two veterans notable for their ability and maturity. Defender McKenna Schoolman and midfielder Maddie Nags. In a sense, both are unlikely and unsung heroes this fall. Schoolman suffered a potentially career-ending leg injury last spring, and Nags was a graduate transfer from East Carolina whose move to Grand Valley was sanctioned by the old coach, not the current one. And it's a second goal for Maddie Nags. Yeah, we've got a great group of women on this team, and I think when you get a coaching change, it opens the opportunity for everyone to have a fresh start. We've had some very good players be the mainstay that they have been at the Grand Valley fans have become accustomed to, and then we've had some that have stepped up. Every role on the team's important. Like, everyone has to show up and practice. You're making the person in, in front of you better, so that's your role. If that's your role, you just have to accept it. And I think if you don't like your role, then you need to work harder than the person in front of you. And I think that everyone's been doing that, and it's been great. I knew that my leadership would be a huge thing to help this team. You know, we got a lot of young kids, so just keep pushing people in practice. And if my time came, it came. And if it didn't, I just knew that, like, I wanted to be a part of this last year, being a leader. And, I mean, my time did come, so it's just been awesome. McKenna Schoolman was one of only four Lakers who played all 107 minutes. Grand Valley's national championship game win in 2019 and will put away her boots after this year 
as she prepares for a summer wedding in 2022. Maddie Nags will be in Allendale as a student only then as she pursues a graduate degree in occupational therapy. But both will share the memory of an unbeaten regular season in their final year of soccer when they join forces with Kennedy Bearden and a large cast of contributors to make a huge splash in Jim Conlon's first season in West Michigan. For the Grand Valley State Sports Report, I'm Tom Cleary. GVSU women's basketball split their opening weekend of GLIAC play as they fell to SVSU on Thursday before righting the ship and grabbing a win against Wayne State on Saturday. Joining us now to talk about his team is head coach Mike Williams. And coach, like we said, you kind of reset this, the record to 0-0, start GLIAC play this week. You welcome in Saginaw, who's a good, experienced team, then take on Wayne State on your home floor. Kind of a tale of two different games this week. You know, it was. Um, and, and again, Saginaw's a good team, no question, but so is Wayne. Um, you know, I thought, I think we played poorly against Saginaw. Uh, I thought we, you know, we missed some shots. We kind of hurried some shots, both around the rim and from the three-point line. And, um, you know, just some of them rattled, didn't go in. And then, obviously, uh, Saturday, a better showing. It, it, that Saginaw Valley game, you could just see the difference that Caitlin Zaricki makes. And we know she's a really good player. She was the GLIAC Freshman of the Year a couple of years ago for Saginaw Valley. She came in and she can do a bunch of different things. I thought a couple of players did a nice job slowing her up, but she played 40 minutes and scored 25 points. She just finds a way to wear you down, it seems like. You know, <clears throat> she's a three-level scorer. Um, she's on point all the time. You, you got to be high alert with her. You know, you relax on her one second, she'll back cut you, comes off a ball screen, gets the ball in transition. Um, you know, she's going to pull a three in your face. Thankfully, she wasn't making those against us behind that ball screen. But, uh, you know, she can get to the rim. She just, she, does, she is a three-level scorer, and, and, and she jet quick. So she's, she's a handful, <laughs> to say the least. They got a couple of guards that are a handful. You know, talk about Maddie Maloney, Maddie Barry. They've, they've got really good guards. And you really did limit them. You did a nice job. Maloney is one of the best three-point shooters in the conference. Was 0 for 6 from 3 in that game. So, yeah, you only score 45 points. Obviously, there's a lot to be disappointed in there. But defensively, you have to be pretty happy with the way your team played against a good offensive side. Team. Well, I, I thought we were, you know, I thought we did a great job being in position, you know, the right position. I thought we, you know, we handled the ball screens pretty well, um, their handoff action pretty well. You know, we didn't let them get going in transition. We kept them off the offensive glass. Um, really, you know, I, I thought we kept their shots, you know, we had them, uh, what do you want to say, off balance on the shots. I thought we did a pretty good job. When they did get some clean looks, they were hurried. But, uh, you know, Kalen's Ricky is, is kind of the separator in that game. And, um, you know, hats off to our players. I thought we did a good job. I think our players are going to be excited uh, to get another chance and to crack at them again. But uh, it was a good first conference game against a really good opponent. And, again, we didn't play poorly. It just said, you know, they're a good team. Then you turn around on Saturday, and, oh, boy, did the offense really come to play. You started out 24-9 to after the first quarter. It really didn't feel that close, to be honest. What was the difference offensively? How did you guys start hunting shots? And, and obviously, the like, shots go in is different than shots not going in, but there's a reason behind it. I think, I think the shots were better on Saturday. I thought we were, we were more relaxed offensively, thought our eyes were up, did a better job, um, you know, seeing the floor, making decisions, thought our spacing was a little better. Um, we got going in transition. You know, Quay did a great job, I thought, pressing the envelope a little bit in transition. Uh, Emily and Hannah you know, got some rebound breakouts, got going in transition. Uh, so I think that helps as well. You know, it kind of it spreads them out. Gives us some more, some easier opportunity to score, and then you know once you make some baskets, I thought the three-point shots that we got were in rhythm, they were settled, and, and they went in. Awfully efficient from the floor as well. You shot 62% from the field in the first quarter. You wound up shooting about 50% for the game. And I thought Ellie Drusty, this was one of her better games in terms of attacking the basket and doing some more things offensively on her own. You know, she did. She got down deep a couple times, uh, more than a couple times. I thought did a good job uh, being balanced and in control that scoring around that rim. If she can score with the left and right hand, she can hit a pull-up jump shot. Um, you know, and, and thought she did a good job, too, when she got down in there. She didn't have anything. She found somebody. And so for her, and, and she is a scorer. She's a person that could be a three-level scorer. She just doesn't quite have that mentality yet um, of, of wanting to score all the time. All right, now you go on the road for the first time in GLIAC play this week. You go to Purdue Northwest and then Parkside. What's the message of this team going against, especially that Parkside team, another team that can really score it? Well, you look again, you're on the road, so but we've been on the road, so it shouldn't be a great adjustment. But uh, Purdue Northwest is a team that can really score in transition. Uh, they have they put points on the board, one of the top teams in the country, getting out on the break and going. Uh, we've got to try to slow them down. They've got two really good guards. 
Um, Brockington and Galbraith can really put points on the board, both from the from the arc and, and getting to the rim. And then you go to Parkside, you know, you, you talk about <clears throat> facing Zeriki, one of the best scorers in the conference. Nelson is right there with her, uh, a senior, senior laden team, a senior guard. You're at their place. Uh, last year on the road, we split at Parkside. So um, again, two really good tests, two tests. And I think our players are starting to embrace these tests instead of like being hesitant about them, which I think is good. And I think it's going to help us um, as we move down the road in conference play. Well, one and one to start GLIAC play. Two more GLIAC games before the uh, holiday break. So best of luck this week, Coach. Thanks as always for your time. We'll talk to you real soon. All right, Jake. Thank you. We'll be right back with more as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues on WGVU. GVSU men's basketball went 1-1 one one over the weekend, falling to Saginaw Valley on Thursday before finding their way back into the win column against Wayne State on Saturday. Joining us now to talk about his team is head coach Rick Wesley. And coach, you go back to GLIAC play and right out of the gates, you take on a really experienced, talented Saginaw Valley team. A back and forth game, you guys had the lead late in that second half. They just stormed back and seemed like they couldn't miss down the stretch. Uh, so a tough way to start GLIAC play, but a nice job to bounce back against Wayne State. To give us your uh, overall thoughts on the split on opening weekend. Well, Thursday night was a tough night for us. You know, we, we we really did some good things. Got got the game uh, where we wanted it. Had the game under control into the second half, and then just didn't play very well with the lead. Um, you know, as we've talked before, teams that get down they come roaring back, and man, they made some tremendous shots. But we we had so many um, careless, unforced errors. You know, we had a 10-second call. We had a, viol a traveling violation on an out of bounds play, I and mean, we had some really. You know, strange things happened that certainly didn't help and uh, really added to their comeback. So, you know, that was disappointing, but we regrouped and we came back on Saturday and, you know, typical Wayne State dogfight of a game and uh, had just enough to survive. Yeah, when you look at that Saginaw Valley game, obviously you have a very veteran team, but it's still, it's been a while since you played in these types of environments, right? With the crowd, with the pressure that comes with all of the, the things involved with that. So to have the, some of those experiences, could this be a good thing going forward to kind of learn, okay, even when teams start making mm -hmm. shots and things start going against you when you have the lead, you gotta just kind of settle down and play your game. Well, time will tell if it's a good thing or not. You know, I'd rather learn lessons in victories than in losses. But, uh, you know, I think um, our St. Leo game down in Florida, we had a similar situation where we had a good lead in the second half and didn't play as well. So I wish we learned our, our lesson there. But, but you know, I, it, sometimes when you go through those things, it's certainly uh, fresh on your mind. I thought when we came back Saturday, uh, late in the game, uh, not only players but coaches as well. You know, we did, did a few things better, uh, put our pl players in a little bit different position, uh, called a few more organized set to keep us um, kind of calm uh, as we we're coming down the stretch. So, you know, the, it's a long season. Every one of these games is going to be tight. And uh, the team that executes the best is the one that's going to come out on top. We talked about it after the game on Saturday, Coach, but to have the tough loss on Thursday night, then be down 10 to Wayne State, the defending GLIAC champions at half at home on Saturday. To see your team respond the way that they did in that second half and just never give up, fight back to get a win. I know this is a veteran team. and You know this is a good group of guys that are going to keep fighting. But that just to me seems like a very signature win early on in the season. Well, you know, it just time will tell. You know, Wayne State won the league last year. They've got some really good guards. Avery Lewis is one of the top frontline players. Um, so, you know, you just got to come out there and battle. You know, I, I don't think we uh, overreact uh, when we're down 10. And at the same token, we shouldn't, you know, think the game's over when we're up 10. You just got to play right to the buzzer. And, and we've been through it before. These teams are good teams. Uh, tremendous parity throughout our league. Uh, great individual players who, when they're down, can make great shots and great plays in a bunch in a, in a hurry. So you just got to keep playing, and you ca you've got to keep your focus right to the very end. You go on the road for the first time, and GLIAC played this week on the road at Purdue Northwest Thursday night, then turn around and go to Parkside and Kenosha on Saturday. What can we expect from those two teams? A couple of teams we didn't see Purdue Northwest last year, and then Parkside, we had a couple of games at our place. They got some guards yeah. that can really score it. Yeah, well, you know, first road test for us uh, in league. Purdue Northwest uh, had a good performance. Uh, they lost, but they played well at Lake State on Saturday. Um, Bernard Freers, Freels, their big guy. I feel like he's been there, you know, forever. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Boyle's a guard. They have they have some very good players. They play a lot of guys. They have, especially at home, they have a lot of enthusiasm. Um, 
you know, I always have great respect for their coaching staff because their guys really are charged up and, and fired up every time we come down there and play them. So just knowing personnel is always a little bit more of a challenge with them. Um, and then Parkside is always one of you know tough teams in our league. Trey Croft is back, who set out, was out last year, who two years ago single-handedly beat us here. Oh, yeah. uh, tremendous score, <clears throat> tremendous individual talent. Um, they run a very uh, motion-like offense. So uh, they, they won at Lake State which by a lot, which really caught everybody's attention. So it, it'll, it'll be a dogfight. It'll be a dogfight. I don't expect anything but that. But, you know, we're healthy. Um, you know, we're getting to the end of the semester. Academics are a little bit of a challenge right now. Um, but we'll get the guys focused, and, and hopefully we can go get a couple good uh, efforts on the road. Yeah, finals week is on the horizon, holiday season as well, but two more GLIAC games in the 2021 calendar. Your best of luck on the road this week, Coach. Thanks for your time. All right, thank you. We'll be right back with more as the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues on WGVU. The Laker volleyball team fell in the first round of the NCAA tournament this weekend. That being said, in his first year as head coach, Jason Johnson's squad is impressed to say the least, making the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015. Joining us now to talk about his team is head coach Jason Johnson. And coach, congratulations on a fantastic year. Obviously, you would love to make a little bit of a deeper run into the postseason, but in your first year as the head coach to take over so tight to the start of the season, when you reflect now looking back on it to make the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2015, what does the season mean to you? You know, obviously it's a great accomplishment. Um, you know, first time in six years to be able to get the team back into the NCAA tournament. I said a few weeks ago when we saw our name um, appear on the TV during the selection show, it probably hit me a little bit different. You know, I think having the experience I have with this program and what we've done over the last 20 years and the success that this program has had, you get a little, you take for granted what it takes to get there. And so I think that really hit home this year uh, with just uh, how difficult it is to get a team in there and then be successful once you're there. And I think ultimately the difference in the match against Hillsdale was just an experienced team versus an inexperienced team. Hillsdale winds up winning the entire regional, <laughs> beating three GLIAC teams along the way, by yeah. the way. Tell us a little bit about that match. It seemed like it was a really tight first set that and things kind of got away from you a little bit as the match progressed. Yeah, we talked a little bit throughout the first set that it was about finding a flow. It's about finding a little comfort zone within what you were doing. We, I felt that we had a little anxiety in it. You know, we were tr pressing a little bit. We were trying to find our, our niche and how we were going to uh, go after the game. I think Hillsdale creates problems for you uh, with the offense they run, with the type of defense they run. I think they're very comfortable with what they do. Um, unfortunately, we came up short in the first set, but I think losing that first set, kind of put us our backs against the wall all of a sudden it was like okay are we are we going to be able to overcome this what does this look like you know you get off to a tough start so yeah unfortunately I think Hillsdale just put a lot of pressure on us that we didn't handle well but, but again I, I felt like uh, we were in a good place going in through the weekend through the practices just didn't perform when you look at this off season what you say about the little things what are some of the things that maybe you can do in the off season to kind of get ahead of that now that you have a full season as a head coach and a full off season as a head coach to get ready for next year yeah i think that's the big thing is now we we have a good 8 months to kind of prepare and you know the big thing right now for us is sitting down and talking about what it is we need to do you know i think ball control is going to be a huge priority we graduate two seniors that were six rotation outsides that passed and did everything for us and now who's going to step into that role and who's going to excel in that role. Um, I think from there, then it's about just creating that competitive environment, you know, both on the court and off of it. Um, working with our strength coach to build a better foundation. I think one of the things we were lacking this year was just a great strength-based uh, foundation. Now, again, everybody navigated the season the same way we did. We had a season last spring, we had the summer and then the fall. But I think uh, one of the things that stood out to me is just we started – um, the physicality of our play started deteriorating a little bit earlier than what I'd like to see and part of that just comes down to putting a better foundation together. It certainly was a long year obviously playing that mm -hmm. spring season have to turn around real quick but I want to go back to those seniors because we're going to run out of time here. I mm -hmm. want to make sure we talk about Allie and Abby and what they mean to you in this program and for them to get back to the mountaintop to get back to the yeah. NCAA tournament and get this program back to where it should be it has to be an awesome way for them to go out even though obviously they would have loved to win a couple more games. Yeah you know it's I don't think we have enough time to talk about how product 
I am in the two of them. Um, I think what they navigated being four-year starters in this program, uh, the injuries, the uh, lack of success early, being as young as we were, especially as freshmen and sophomores, having to play with other freshmen and sophomores early on to build this program back up. So being a part of it with Coach Scanlon and then obviously by myself this year, um, it, it's they're special kids. You know, they're kids that I hope will continue to stay around the program, be invested in the program. Um, I will, I'm excited to see them move on at this point, but I also am lamenting that we, they won't be with us any longer. Well, they definitely have a great way to go out, and it's awesome for them to get that experience in the NCAA tournament as well. And mm -hmm. I'm sure they've left a great foundation for you in your first year as a head coach, and a lot of big things ahead. We're looking forward to you just getting started in your tenure as the head coach at Grand Valley State. But congratulations on a great first year, and thanks for joining us all season long. Thanks, Jake. Appreciate it. Don't go away, the Grand Valley State Sports Report continues right after this. That's all the time we have this week on the Grand Valley State Sports Report. GVSU women's soccer will take on Lenore Ryan on Thursday in the NCAA semifinals. The broadcast can be found at NCAA.com and kickoff is scheduled for 1 p.m. Eastern Time. GVSU men's and women's basketball will hit the road this week. They'll take on Purdue Northwest this Thursday. Tip-off for the women's game is scheduled for 6 p.m., followed by the men at 8 p.m. They'll then make their way over to Kenosha for a matchup against Parkside on Saturday. Tip-off for those games is scheduled for 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. respectively. For upcoming games as well as live broadcasts of every Laker Athletic Program, Program, visit GVSULakers.com. This is our last show before the new year, but as always, we'll keep you updated on action around GVSU on our YouTube channel at YouTube.com slash WGVU35. Make sure you hit the subscribe button to get updated video and highlights all year long. We'll return to continue the winter sports season on Monday, January 10th. Until then, for the entire crew here at WGVU, I'm Jake Levy. We'll see you in January, Laker Nation, and as always, anchor up. Kind of pushed her defender off a little bit. Now Steinwasher looking to queue up a shot from distance. Steinwasher, oh, it's off the crossbar. Second shot, no. Back into that for Katie Barron. And the Lakers take the lead after a flourish of action.